Hi, I am so excited for our workout today. We are doing an introduction to Pilates workout. I can't wait to get started. So let's lay down on our backs. And I'm gonna talk a lot as we go through this workout because I think in addition to moving, it's really important to kind of hear some of the principles of Pilates so that you can get the most out of your workout. So I want you to start on your back with your feet flat about hip distance apart and arms down at your sides. And we're just gonna take a couple of breaths here. So take a nice big inhale for me. And then exhale, just let it all out. Do another inhale and this time see if you can make your ribs move side to side when you inhale. So try not to get your chest moving up and down. Try to get your ribs to move side to side. And then when you exhale, see if you can funnel all of that air out as you kind of let your belly flatten naturally. Okay, so inhale, ribs side to side, through the nose, exhale, through the mouth. We're gonna do about two more like that and I'll tell you why it's important. I understand breathing can be boring, okay? I'm right there with you. I know it can feel slow, I know you wanna move, but I will tell you the research shows us, we know this, that if we're not breathing correctly or if we're not breathing at all, our abdominal muscles actually can't work. And the whole purpose of Pilates, right, is to get our bodies moving correctly. And I know you guys want to work your abdominal muscles as a part of that, but if you aren't breathing, that's not gonna happen. So I want you to just start with those few breaths to make sure that you are tapping into that breath and that your body is prepared for movement, all right? So that's why it is important, I promise. All right, so on this next exhale, so take your inhale. On your next exhale, I want you to curl your tailbone towards you. This is called a pelvic tilt. Okay, so I've curled my tailbone towards me. I've flattened my low back. And now I'm gonna inhale and go the opposite way, which means my tail comes down and my back arches. So these are called pelvic tilts. Like I said, we're gonna continue. Exhale, roll through the spine. So you're gonna curl towards you and then inhale take it the opposite way and this is not a very big motion I want you to again feel like your chest is just nice and still so you're not moving all the way up into that upper spine this is just through the lower spine trying to loosen up and get that pelvis moving a big part of Pilates one piece I love so much is it helps our bodies remember how to move and a lot of times we've forgotten and movement is life to our bodies, to our joints. It needs that. It's like spraying WD-40 right into a joint when you move it. But we forget sometimes how to move either because of poor habits that we've developed or because of injuries or pain we have. So we want to teach the body how to move again. And this is just a part of that. All right, so on this next one, you're going to exhale again, curl your tailbone roll all the way up into a bridge okay so i'm continuing to roll up into what we call a bridge right here i inhale at the top and then i'm going to exhale and roll down trying to start from the top from my chest rolling through my mid spine all the way to my lower spine and my tail comes down so inhale at the bottom again we're training your breath as well exhale curl your tailbone roll yourself up you can go at your own pace and speed here. Inhale at the top to pause. And then exhale, curl and roll down. We call this spinal articulation. Sometimes we call it segmental mobilization. All you need to know is it means we're trying to move each vertebrae on top of the next instead of moving in chunks. So there will be times we want to stay kind of steady and not move them all, but there are gonna be times we want to move them. So we're just trying to train that movement. All right, on this next one, we're gonna roll up and stay there. Roll up into your bridge. Stay here. Inhale, your arms come back behind you. Exhale, bring them back down to your sides. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, sweep the arms down. See if you can keep those hips lifted. Last one. Arms down to your sides. Inhale again. And then exhale, curl. 
and roll back down. Nice job. We're going to bring our hands behind our heads. Thumbs at the base of your skull, elbows wide. Okay, take your inhale again. Exhale, I want you to tuck your chin and just gently roll up. And then you're going to roll back down. And I'm going to talk through this as we go. So the exhale takes you up. And then the inhale takes you back down. So you're probably going to notice I'm going a lot slower than you might be used to going. There's quite a few reasons for it. One is I'm going to teach you how to control your movement. If you just throw yourself up, down, up, down, up, down, that is a lot of momentum. So you're actually not using your muscles all that much as much as using momentum. So the other part of that is not only is it not controlled, but you're not getting as good of a workout, believe it or not. I can probably give you a better workout doing 15 of these really slow than doing 50 really fast, which might just hurt your neck. All right, so that's one of the reasons. The other one is I want it to match your breath because we want to come into that breath again. And I want you to be able to just see what's going on. I want you to keep your tail down. So when you roll up, don't let, your, don't let this happen. If you can see, like I'm kind of curling both directions, keep your tail down, okay? On this one, roll up and stay there. Now I'm gonna inhale and twist to my right. Exhale, come to center. Inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, come to center. Inhale, come back down. Same thing, come up. Inhale to the right. Exhale, center. Inhale, left. Exhale, center. Inhale, down. Still keeping the legs nice and relaxed. They're just not moving during this series. Okay, roll up. We have two more. Now we're going to go to the left first. Center. Try to keep the elbows wide so you're not just pulling on your neck. And if any of this does start to bother your neck, I have a video all about how to do crunches without neck pain. So that might be a really good adjunct for you to find. And center. And come back down. Nice job. Arms can come down to your sides. Straighten out the left leg and let's hug the right leg into your chest. So give it a good squeeze. And then we're going to straighten it up towards the ceiling. And we're going to go for leg circles. So now what we're trying to do, instead of move the spine, we want to try to keep it still. We're only going to move the leg. So I want you to drop it around to the right and down and then come to the left and back up. So I just drew a big circle. Mine's more like an oval because I have a wall in my way. <laughs> and yours might be more like an oval. It could be really any shape. But these are called leg circles. All right, and again, you're not just throwing the leg all over the place, especially as an introduction here as we're getting started. We want to control the movement. This is a really nice one to give you a great example of what Pilates can do for you in that we're working the leg, all right, you're getting some leg work, but the abdominal muscles are working quite a bit also to keep you nice and stable to control the motion. Okay, now reverse directions. And that's, to me, such a great thing about Pilates is we're going to focus on different body parts, but really you're kind of working everything all at once because it's such a full body way of moving. Pilates should make you better at everything else you do. It should never be the only thing you do. That's why we add, in the Jessica Vallant Pilates program, we add some weights, we add some bands, we'll add some cardio. But Pilates is such a great way of moving and teaching you how to move. Good, and then hug that knee in. But it really should make you better at the other things that you're doing. All right, let's switch legs. So left leg comes up, and when you're ready, go down to the left and around to the right. So some of you might be wondering what you do if your hamstring is really tight and you can't get the leg up very high or if you can't get it straight. That's okay, you just do what you can do and have the circles be as small as you need to. So see right here, I have like dinner plate size circles and that is completely fine. Another modification is you can bend the right knee like this and do them right here. All right, so I'll always be able to give you modifications and that is never a problem. Switch directions. You should never work with anyone who tells you that you can't modify for your own body. 
All right, now eventually you wanna kind of step out of your comfort zone possibly, right, and try something new and see how you do with it. But you know your body best. And if you don't yet, then you're here to get to know it better. <laughs> okay, hug that knee in, good job. And let's put that foot down and bring the other foot in. All right, so we worked our upper abdominals a little bit with our crunches. We're gonna work into the lower abs. What I want you to do is again, take an inhale. Exhale, and as you do, you're bringing the right leg up to what we call tabletop, which is right here, okay? Now, take another inhale. Exhale, pull the belly button gently in, and we can talk more about that, but I don't want you to brace. You're not um, losing your breath. You're not holding your breath. You're not doing anything like that. All I want is for you to think about what is happening down here in that lower section because you're gonna lift the other leg off as well. And that is what's holding you nice and steady because what I don't want is this. Like, I don't know if you can see my back. I don't want you to lose that control. Like, oh, I can barely hold the legs up, what do I do? It really takes oh, an understanding of using this strength here to have this position. So if this is too much, you can just do one leg at a time, all right? But this is called tabletop. It's a great position to understand in Pilates. We use it quite a bit. I know you're probably sitting here wondering why I'm talking so much because this is an exercise in and of itself, right? I'm making you work in this position. So it's part of the fun of it all. So when you're ready, lower the right leg down like you're gonna dip your toes in water, lift it back up, and then the other leg, and lift. And this whole time, you're trying to maintain the position here in your spine and in your pelvis. Same thing I said a moment ago, just don't let yourself arch. And if this is too much, if it's hurting your back, if you just can't control it at all, then you're coming down here and you can just lift your legs and alternate right there. Okay, instead of lowering and alternating, you're gonna lift like a march. So we'll just do a couple more. Now, if you would like, for the, our final set here, hands can come behind the head, roll up and do that same thing, okay? But that's up to you. This is a good one for people who have a good fitness background and they're just learning about Pilates so they feel strong in this position, or people who have a background of Pilates and just using this as a refresher. This might be a nice thing to try. Okay, one more each side. Nice job, roll down, hug your knees in. And you're gonna roll onto your left side. All right, so two options. If you are, again, beginner, beginner, then you're gonna come down here on your side and prop your head up. If you have a little bit of background and you would like, you can come up into a high elbow. So it's your choice. Bottom leg is going to be straight, but it's at the front corner of your mat. And then the top leg lifts at hip height, and you're gonna pull the toes back towards you, okay? Now, inhale, sweep the leg forward, keeping the toes pulled back, then point and bring the legs back. This is part of our Pilates sideline series, one of my favorites. I do a lot, and there are so many exercises we do in the sideline position. And remember, you can just stay right down flat on your side, it's gonna make this easier. If you are in a high elbow, I want you to press away from your elbow so that your bottom ribs lift up. I just don't want you sinking, that doesn't count. Just lay down if that's where you are. Now, the purpose of this, a couple things. One, it's what we call disassociation in Pilates. You'll see a few exercises like that where you're trying to keep something stable while something else moves. And that's what we just did on our back with the leg circles, same idea. All right, and then the other pieces, this is actually really great gluteus medius work, hip abductor work, and you're just moving the leg as much as you can that you're not you know, flopping around or letting everything else move. Now we're gonna take it into circles. So bring it forward and keep the toes pointed now and around and back down. Nice. So everybody's gonna be different here. You're gonna look different than I look. We're gonna be different from side to side. We're gonna be different in different directions. So now you can switch directions. And that's okay. 
That is okay. We're not supposed to look like each other. We all have different strengths. We all have different things that we're working on. Good, one more. Nice job. And then push yourself up and we'll just go to the other side. And I want you in the same position you're in, high elbow or down flat. The bottom leg, remember, comes forward because it gives you more balance to do that. Don't have it right in line with your body. Bring it forward. Top leg up, pull the toes back, and when you're ready, inhale, and then exhale, point, and come back. If you're wondering if the flex and the point matter, yes and no, I don't want you to get caught up in it. Like, I don't want you to think, oh my gosh, I can't get the choreography, and then freak out and stop. No big deal if you're doing that part opposite or if you just need to point, that's okay. Eventually, yes, it's nice to add because it actually adds a sciatic nerve glide to this. So it's a really nice traditional Pilates piece, but no, don't get caught up in it the first time. <laughs> All right, a couple more here. Nice job. Keep in mind, I mean, there's thousands of exercises I could give you and we're just scratching the surface of some of the foundation Pilates exercises. So you're gonna come forward, up, and around. And here are our circles. This is just kind of a nice, like I said, a refresher for those who have done it before. It's a nice introduction for those of you wondering what Pilates is about a little bit. It'll show you some different positions that we do. Obviously, I've told you why we do it. I'm a talker, you'll know by now. <laughs> Switch directions. I'm one of those people that always likes to know why, right? I want to know why I'm doing something or why it matters. And so I tend to talk through that. <laughs> okay, last two. And I think being a physical therapist adds to that. I always like to know the anatomy and all those nitty gritty pieces. All right, good. And then go ahead and push yourself up. And we are right into what we call mermaid stretch. We're prepared for it. So it's a typical, the typical mermaid position is a Z sit, which would be your right foot in and your left foot back. If this is not a happy place for you, you can sit up on a block or on a cushion, or you could just sit cross-legged if you prefer. So we're trying to get both sit bones down as much as you can. Arms come out to the side. I'm going to go to the right first. So my right hand comes down, my left hand comes over and I'm stretching, opening my ribs and then use those abs to come back up and switch. And lift. Nice. So we're stretching through our sides, our ribs, our obliques, our quadratus lumborum, and then into our hips simply by the position that we're sitting in. Last one. And back up. Nice job. Hands come down. We're just going to switch legs. And if you simply had them crossed, just cross the other ankle on top. Okay, arms out to the side. Now we go to the left first. And let's inhale to come back up. Exhale the other way. Nice job. And back up. And then arms can come down. Nice. We're going to come on to all fours. All right, so hands are underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Round your spine, tuck your tail, tuck your head. Take it into an arch just because it feels good. <laughs> One more like that and we're warmed up for it. And arch. Nice, come back halfway in between those two. Reach your right arm forward and your left leg back. Spinal balance, see how that feels. This is not a traditional Pilates exercise, but it is a great fitness exercise overall. And then come back down and I'm prepping you for a Pilates exercise we're about to do. Left arm forward. Right arm back. And come back. So if that's enough for you, you're gonna do another set of that spinal balance, okay? If not, I'm gonna take you through one plank. So have your hands spread, fingertips spread out. 
Elbows don't lock, so they're slightly bent. Step one foot back and curl the toes underneath you. Again, you want to really press away from your hands so you're strong in that entire back, strong through your belly, and then your left leg steps back to find a plank. So we do quite a few different plank positions in Pilates. It's always nice to hold and find one, but find that spinal balance if it's better for you, okay? And just hold five, four, three, two, one. Good knees down. Press back. Roll yourself up. Bring the legs around in front of you. Let's do spine stretch to end here. Have the legs mat distance apart. Your arms are in front of you. Sit up nice and tall, as tall as you can. This alone might be a stretch for you, I know. I give it to my clients quite a bit, just this sitting piece. When you're ready, exhale, round forward. Inhale, restack. Two more like that. Exhale, reach. Reach past your toes if you can. And lift up. Last one. Restack. Hands come down. Give your head just a couple of circles side to side. Come back to center and find your breath. One more deep, deep inhale and deep exhale. And great job. Thanks so much for joining me. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. Remember, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified every time a new video comes up. Like and comment on this video and let me know what you thought. You can also always come over to jessicavalantpilates.com to find all the resources I have for living a healthy lifestyle, including full-length workout videos, healthy recipes, and a community I would love for you to be a part of. So I'll see you there.